Good morning. My name is Vaishal Tolia. I'm an assistant clinical professor in the Department of Emergency Medicine at UC San Diego Health System. And my project continues the theme of telehealth and uh, e-health technology, and it's entitled ED Titrate, which is the Emergency Department Telemedicine Initiative to Rapidly Accommodate in Times of Emergency. The reason I chose this project is really behind the premise of emergency department challenges that all EDs are facing across the nation. We know that from 1997 till 2009, we've seen an annual increase of over 40 million patients that are seen in our nation's emergency departments. Not only that, but hospitals are increasingly operating at full capacity, which causes the problem of overcrowding and increased wait times in the emergency department. Those wait times translate to unproductive time for patients where they're lingering in pain or unable to see a provider or get the care that they need. And in many cases, those patients actually leave without being seen. And we know that patients who leave without being seen uh, have higher patient safety risk and adverse events and also lost revenue for the health system. That variable demand for resources is part of the problem. And matching the resources that we have with the demand uh, is an increasing challenge in emergency department care and staffing. So in the past, health systems have responded in a couple of different ways. One is to simply place a physician in triage. So every patient that comes in at the time of triage with a triage nurse gets seen by a physician and care at least gets initiated. We know that these fixed shifts actually result in variable cost effectiveness because the physician is there for a fixed amount of time and they may or may not be needed during that time. And then when they leave, that's usually when the patient surge occurs, of course. So to better match that time and need of resource, uh, some places have gone to a backup system, an, an on-call system for emergency physicians, though this is also fraught with some complications. One thing is the delay in initiation, something we've termed activation energy. What activation energy is is the reluctance for the provider who is currently working in the ED to ask for help, to actually call in an additional physician. There's also some reluctance from the home physician to come in and say, you know, the emergency department's full, the waiting room's full, what am I really going to be able to do? There's also travel time for that physician. Once that backup physician is activated to come in from home and, and then eventually leave. And then there's something what we've termed deactivation energy, which is once that physician is there, they tend to linger and they tend to stay because the last thing they want is to go home and then be called back an hour later. So matching that physician and nurse resource with the patient need is part of the major challenge that overcrowded EDs face in our country. And that's where emergency department telemedicine comes into play. It's really an innovative use of telehealth that's never been done before in, in primarily evaluating patients in the emergency department. We really effectively apply this just-in-time use of our physician and nurse resource. It actually dramatically reduces this activation and deactivation energy that I was referring to, and it has the potential to be very cost effective because during a per given period of time, this process can be turned on, then turned off again, turned on again, at, at any time that the patient surge or care demands it. So our project, ED Titrate, is an IRB-approved study. At this point, it's a pilot project really to evaluate the safety, the satisfaction, the acceptance, and we're also looking at other metrics like cost-effectiveness and length of stay. Some of the logistics of this project is that we have a full mobile telemedicine cart in our emergency department, and several of the rooms adjacent to the waiting room are wired for this module. We have an, a nurse doing administrative duties each day who then can easily be switched to the telemedicine role. We have a physician on call, and currently, the, in, during the pilot phase of this project, it's from noon till 8, Monday through Friday. The patient care from the telemedicine physician can either be taken to completion or patient seen and then sent back to the waiting room if appropriate and that care initiated, or if necessary and the clinical scenario dictates, that patient can easily be handed off to the on-site physician. For patients that are uh, taken to full completion and are ready for disposition, which represents about 94% of the patients in, in our group so far, that those findings and disposition plan are confirmed with the on-site physician so that we can demonstrate uh, that this is a safe encounter. These are just a couple images of what our module looks like. You can see on the left that there is a uh, 
there's a high definition camera here. I can actually control this camera from home, pan, tilt, zoom, and, and get fantastic images of, of uh, rashes or other uh, areas that uh, the nurse is assisting me in examining. A little close-up view of the module shows some of the peripherals. I can actually auscultate heart, lung sounds, abdominal sounds, uh, bowel sounds, uh, as well as examine ears, throat. The patients love this because when I tell them that they have an ear infection, they look in the, I'm looking in the ears with the assistance of the nurse, and they're seeing that image on the screen as well. So they're actively participating in their healthcare. From a safety standpoint, we again have that on-site physician confirm some of the findings uh, and the plan of the telemedicine physician. We do a 48-hour patient callback, one, to see how they're doing, and two, to make sure that you know, they enjoyed this process and if they have any comments for us. Uh, we've had even patients comment to us, I'm really sorry about all the earwax that I had on the exam. Um, so you know, they're, they're very, very happy with the technology and, and you know, really uh, enjoy participating in it. And then from a chart review, we look at patients seven days after their visit to ensure that they didn't return to the emergency department or have an adverse outcome. Some of the preliminary outcomes have been interesting. We're still very early in our study. We've uh, had about 60 patients uh, in initially, mainly from January through the end of March. Um, but we've surveyed each of the providers, the telemedicine and on-site provider, as well as the nurse and the patient. The, from a score of one to five, five being highly satisfied with the encounter, the providers average about 4.7. Interestingly, the patients with, the, again, 60 patients, the mean score is about 4.9. So they've been very, very satisfied with the encounter. The average uh, triage category uh, is a triage category of four. So one being the highest acuity patient, five being the lowest acuity. We tend to see lower acuity patients through the telemedicine module. That's not to say that we can't and haven't seen sicker patients that you know have uh, non-emergent situations, you know, those with abdominal pain who we can uh, initiate care and then hand off to the on-site physician. What's most interesting so far is of the 60 patients that we've evaluated is the length of stay in the emergency department. So looking at a population test value from last November through March, we've shown a reduction in the length of stay for the discharged patients of about 130 minutes for the telemedicine patient. So that's a significant uh, improvement in flow. The economic model that we're using really is supply chain economics. So we're trying to match that need and the staffing of the physician and nurse. The nurses are paid per hour of telemedicine call, and they're otherwise doing administrative duties when not actively doing uh, telemedicine evaluation. And the physicians are paid on a per case basis, the telemedicine physician. Um, and there's two different rates, one for care to completion, one for care initiated and then handed off. Both those rates are less than the average we would collect per ED patient. So it's a sustainable, cost-effective model. The advantages are it's very patient-centered, it's innovative, there's even potential for education. I've, I've seen a patient with a cutaneous abscess whom I called in a resident to do uh, an incision and drainage on, and I was able to fully supervise and, and discuss actively with that resident and the patient as the procedure was being done, which is fantastic. The, the limitation is that it's very susceptible to selection bias, naturally, because of those of us participating. The future is that if safety and efficacy can be demonstrated, and, and this is something that patients seem satisfied with, and this is something that really can go to the other UC emergency departments, I would venture to guess not only the emergency departments within the UC health system, but non-academic medical centers as well are facing similar challenges of overcrowding and increasing wait times. Larger studies need to be done to really evaluate the process and safety improvement here, um, as well as uh, for, for some systems that have multiple emergency departments, that telemedicine physician can actually see patients potentially in multiple EDs at the same time. So I'd like to thank my mentor and the chair of our department, Dr. David Gus, uh, Benjamin Gus, who's the lead nurse. Our UCSD ED titrate team, which is ever growing, every month we seem to have more nurses and more physicians interested in participating in our project, which is great. We're up to about 15 total now. Uh, and thank you, Terry and the UCOP for this opportunity and support. Thank you.